Hi, I'm Dr. Anne Marie. Welcome to the special edition of my Better Living Show, Your Life. Over the next half hour, my dog Buka and I hope to share with you some pet related health reports and some uplifting stories that inspire you to be the best pet parent you can be. We're going to kick the show off with a health challenge that pretty much goes straight across the board from human to man's best friend. You know, as we age, it's pretty well recognized that we will most likely have to deal with some joint issues. Well, same thing goes with our senior dogs. They usually have to deal with some joint discomfort also. But when it comes to our feline friends, well, that's not as recognized because cats tend to hide their signs of pain. It's all part of their survival instincts. Friend's most memorable moment was when he walked across a balcony on our second floor and fell and bounced a couple times as he fell and um, he survived. This 11-year-old snowshoe feline lives up to the superstition, cats have nine lives. That's why when Ren started having a hard time jumping up and down and stopped playing with toys, his human, Liz Patel, wanted to find out what was happening to her senior furry friend. All right, here we go. <laughs> like people, cats are living longer than ever. Did you know cats age about seven times faster than us? So in human years, Ren is actually 70 years old. Just like us, this increased longevity means the increased risk of having to deal with heart disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity, and joint health problems. Ren's discomfort is centered in the elbow joints, these joints here, the hock joints, which are equivalent to our ankle joints, and also the hip joints. You can clearly see on these x-rays why Ren is having a hard time being active these days. Simply, all the cartilage, his natural shock absorber, which normally cushions his elbow joint, is worn away. For the past 15 years, Dr. Duncan Lascelles has dedicated his research to pain management and helping pets battling joint health conditions and mobility challenges. We think that maybe one of the reasons so many cats suffer from degenerative joint disease is that they become overweight early on in life. There are a number of treatment options for painful degenerative joint disease in cats. For example, dietary modulation, dietary supplements, and drugs. One of the more common therapies that we start with are dietary supplements. Studies show that a joint health supplement that contains the combination of glucosamine, chondroitin sulfate, and avocado soybean unsaponifiables, or ASU for short, work together to help protect the joint and may prevent the breakdown of cartilage. As for Ren, he's now helping veterinarians and his feline friends. He's part of a study testing the potential pain-relieving benefits of joint health supplements. It's an extremely rewarding part of veterinary medicine to take someone's pet, like Ren, an 11-year-old snowshoe, who's having trouble moving around the house because of painful joints, and to be able to give that cat more mobility and improved quality of life is extremely satisfying. It's never easy seeing our furry friends age. You know, while you're in the veterinarian's office, why don't you talk to them about some management tips for your senior cat? Supplements and simple home care tips like an orthopedic bed or low-sided litter tray can definitely improve your cat's quality of life. We'll be right back. Coming up on Your Life, how man's best friend is helping the blind and visually challenged pursue their passions in life. It's now time for a trivia question. Which breed is most likely to have joint issues in their hips? Beagle, Jack Russell Terrier, Labrador Retriever, or Westie? The answer when we come back. Did you figure out our trivia question? Well, the answer is C, Labrador Retriever. Any breed can be affected, but issues with the hips are most common in large breed dogs. If your pet is showing any signs like difficulty with stairs, getting up, or climbing in and out of the car, talk with your veterinarian today. Welcome back to this special edition of my Better Living Show, Your Life. If you'd like more information about any of the segments that you see here today, or if you have a story idea, log on to our show's website, yourlifetv.com. You know, recently my crew and I traveled to Yorktown Heights, New York to visit a very special nonprofit organization dedicated to the blind and the visually impaired. 
The Guiding Eyes for the Blind has so many heart-wrenching stories. As you'll see in this next report, we're going to give you a behind-the-scenes look at Dog Day. I'm really excited and anxious. Um, having a cup of coffee was probably not a good idea before this, as I'm all on edge. <laughs> I think I might start crying, I'm not really sure. I just can't wait to embark on the next chapter of my life. Abigail Lanier is a bit excited because she's about to meet her new college companion. We're not talking about a roommate, but the four-legged furry friend that's going to help her make the transition to college life. At this time, we're going to give you guys all the information that you have just been itching to know about your dogs. Uh, Abigail, you are getting a black lab female named Alexa, A-L-E-X-A, -E Alexa. Every month, up to 15 clients come to our main training facility and spend 26 days going through our unique Good. training process. Dog Day is the first day that our clients get to meet their special companions, and they're always filled with anticipation. It's always exciting when we tell the clients the name of their dog. Her name's Alexa. Sitting here now waiting to meet my dog, um, two or three words that I guess can describe it is um, anxiety, but not the stressful kind, because there's a good benefit coming. <laughs> um, a peace because I know I'm going to have this friend for a long while after now and that that, that bond's going to be really strong. Abigail? Mm -hmm. At the age of four, Abigail was diagnosed with a genetic eye disease, retinitis pigmentosa. With her vision getting progressively worse, this vibrant 18-year-old turned to guiding eyes for the blind. The nonprofit organization based in Yorktown Heights, New York, breeds, raises, trains, and matches guide dogs with blind and visually impaired people from all around the world. Do you need me to describe her to you? Do you have a pretty I have a good eye. pretty good eyes for that. Thanks, And all these services are completely free. It costs about forty-five thousand dollars to uh, breed, raise, and train a, a guide dog pair, a guide dog and their partner, to get them to graduate. So there is a lot of uh, corporate support, personal support, donations, and so on. No, no government support at all. Uh, we depend completely on donations. And we rely on our incredible staff to help provide the care that, that we do here, from those that work in the kennel and, and keep our dogs happy and healthy while they're here for their short time, as well as the veterinary staff in the vet hospital here. And we rely on an incredible number of volunteers to make this place go. Since 1954, Guiding Eyes for the Blind has graduated more than 6,000 guide dog teams. Now Abigail and her black lab Alexa are about to join the ranks. I think uh, beyond just being a great companion, she's going to be able to give me a lot more freedom than my cane. The very next day after they meet their dogs, they go out for a walk at our White Plains Satellite Facility. The trainers work very closely with them, but they get a real taste of what it's going to be like working with their guide dog. Alexa, forward. Let her go first. Good, Good girl. girl. I'm comfortable and confident in how she's going to watch out and take care of me based on just a few hours we've already spent together. I love graduations. Um, it's, it's a very special day, and it's a day that's full of warmth and full of emotion. With Alexa by her side, Abigail is now in college pursuing her dream of being a sound engineer in the music business, a dream being brought to life by the amazing work of Guiding Eyes. There's no way to say in words or like gifts or anything how much what they do, how it, it's complete, completely priceless. We want to thank everyone from Guiding Eyes for the Blind and all their graduates for sharing their inspirational stories with us. It's amazing to think how these canine companions are impacting so many lives. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. You know, not too long ago, my rescue dog, Buka, twisted her right rear leg while hurting the horses. She tore her cranial cruciate ligament. This ligament is equivalent to our ACL in our knee. Well, after wondering what was the best treatment course for her, we decided to take her to see an orthopedic specialist when it comes to veterinary care. Hurting the horses, chasing squirrels, and simply loving life. This is a typical day for my six-year-old rescue dog, Buka. It's hard to believe 16 weeks ago, my furry friend had major surgery. 
There's the ACL tear right there. And it's starting to get a little ratty. Oh, wow. Dr. Sherman Knapp invited me to scrub in on Buka's case. Through his tiny incision, it was confirmed Buka tore her cranial cruciate ligament in her right rear leg. This knee stabilizing ligament is equivalent to our anterior cruciate ligament or ACL, an injury we hear so much about in sports news. Since Buka is young, healthy, and a large breed dog, Dr. Knapp is performing an innovative procedure called a tibial plateau leveling osteotomy, or TPLO for short. Simply, Buka's leg bones are being reshaped so that the ligament she tore in her knee is no longer needed. Well, if we can take this hill and make it a flat parking lot, we take away the need for the emergency brake. So it's sort of like moving from San Francisco to Kansas. It usually takes about eight weeks for the cut and the bone to heal. To help speed up Buka's recovery, a synthetic bone graft was added to her surgical site. <laughs> 24 hours after surgery, our little patient was coming home. Coming home with a list of restrictions, range of motion exercises to get her leg moving, and this new ultrasound device to boost Buka's bone healing process. We're trying to prove that we can actually accelerate that healing so we can get bone healing anywhere between six and eight weeks. After several weeks of daily ultrasound treatments, extensive physical therapy with the rehabilitation team, and days spent trying to slow Buka down, here we are at her 10-week checkup. I brought up her four-week post-op films on the right-hand side, and these are today's. Um, in this view, you can really see the difference. So here we can see the osteotomy site. Mm -hmm. um, over this side here, it's gone. Wow, so that tells me that her bone is healed. The question is, how well is Buka functioning and bearing weight on that right rear leg? If we compare that now to what we have on today's evaluation, where we're healed, Again, here's our left hind limb, there's our right hind limb. You can see 41 and 41, so we're exactly the same at a walk-in and a trot um, in both hind limbs. And the proof is in the numbers. Check out my canine kids' latest muscle measurements. So we are 47 centimeters on this side. And the muscle mass. 47 on this side, so we're even between left and right, which is really, really important. Doc, I'm not sure how Luke or I could ever thank you for giving her a, a new leash on life, no pun intended. But. Now we're, we're happy to help and I'm really, really pleased with, with how, how Buka did. Now even though Buka is discharged as a patient, over the next month it's extremely important we gradually build her up to be officially off leash. There's a 50% chance that the other knee at some point in time is going to go. Okay. And so it is something that education is important, trying to keep their weight under control, keeping them active, keeping their muscle mass built up. Um, all those things are possibly things that we can do to possibly lower the chances or the incidence of this occurring to the other knee. We have to let Buka be a dog. 50% of the dogs go their entire lives without it happening to the other knee. And now here we are, 16 weeks after surgery. And as you can see, Buka is feeling better, playing better, and back to living life. What an amazing procedure. As for Buka, she's officially discharged. If she could speak, she'd be the first one to tell you that she's happy to be back chasing those squirrels in full force. Hi, welcome to our kitchen. You know, a healthy diet rich in fruits and veggies is not only important to us, but also to our pets. Today, we're gonna be whipping up a nutritious but easy treat for our canine friends. What we're making are sweet potato spears, and what you basically need are two sweet potatoes, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and a pinch, about a teaspoon's worth of cumin. What you wanna first do is take your sweet potatoes and cut them into spears, long spears about an inch thick. Once you cut them up, put them onto a, a baking sheet, lay them out on one layer so they bake evenly. Take a brush. This is so easy, I can do it. And just basically brush it onto the sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are chock full of protein, fiber, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals. It's one of those super veggies. Flip them over, brush evenly. Okay, that looks pretty good. Lay that down. Take our cumin and just sprinkle on lightly. A little bit more cumin, there you go. And what you wanna do is now pop this into an oven at 375 degrees. You wanna turn them over often so they don't burn. And basically, bake them until they're lightly tender and slightly brown. That's basically it. All right guys, ready to check on your treats? All right, let's see. 
All right, oh, they're definitely done. These look great. You definitely want to let these cool off before serving. You could use them as treats or add two to six spears to your dog's daily meals. It depends on their size. Check with their vet. Okay, taste test. Let's try it. Is that good? Until next time, bon appetit. It's pretty good. Hi, welcome back. You know, if you're a dog lover like me, you know the special bond you could have with your four-legged friend. Well, now imagine if your profession or line of duty entailed that your partner be a canine cop. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Well, on our tail end segment, we're gonna give you a look at a dog's life on the line. This is the county, Baltimore County, Maryland. Officer Ben and his partner, Officer David Rossler, have dedicated their lives to the community they serve. He watches my back, I watch him. He never lets me down. Uh, he catches a lot of bad guys, keeps them off the street. 15, 28, 10, 97. In his eight years of service, canine cop Ben has apprehended over 200 people off the streets of Baltimore County. Officer Ben is Officer Rossler's fifth canine partner, and as he says, Ben is probably the best partner he's ever had in his 23 year career with the police department. Regular work. Go work. I'm gonna go fetch some pie. We joined this canine team on a narcotics training session, sniffing out drugs as Officer Ben's specialty. Ready, Ready buddy? Ready? Fetch pie. Check up. Boy. Check here. He can sense my surroundings a lot better than I can or any human partner. His hearing is so much more acute. His, uh, obviously his sense of smell is much more acute. And he detects people long before I ever hear them, see them, or anything. While watching Officer Rossler and Officer Ben in action, you cannot help but think of one of those Hollywood movie cop team scenarios. He actually reminds me of the dog off of the one with, uh, was it Jim Belushi, canine cop? Uh, where the dog's like sleeping in the bed with him and then he's chasing bad guys. Well, he's the same way, he's full of rotten. I kick him out of bed and he hops right back up into bed. When I wake up, he's laying there. But check out this real footage of this dynamic canine team in action. We had somebody that just murdered somebody at a restaurant, and we had several police officers and canine dogs in the area looking for him. And I arrived on the scene with Ben, and they had been looking for probably about 45 minutes for the suspect. And Ben located this murder suspect in about two minutes, hiding underneath of a pile of tires. Police canine, speak up now, release the dog, you may get bit. Police canine, speak up now, release the dog. Right here. They will protect you till the bitter end. They'll do whatever you tell them to do. They would die for you. Fuck it. Oh, 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 nice, nice hit. Nice. And, and we know that. And most of us have a great love for our partners on top of the commitment to the job and what we do. Corporal Michael Stricker and his canine partner, Officer Jack, are also part of this unique police division. Right now, the Baltimore County K-9 unit is the largest in the state of Maryland with 29 working dogs and 25 handlers. These K-9 officers are cross-trained in narcotics, explosive and gun detection, and the Baltimore County unit is lucky to have a rare asset, a police cadaver dog. Officer Amy is Officer Rossler's other K-9 partner on the force. She's our, only, our department's only cadaver dog, and her job is so much more varied than even the patrol dogs. Uh, she's got to be able to look for uh, human remains and water, burn down buildings, explosions, collapsed buildings, burials, wooded areas, field areas. Her, her specialty is so spread out that it's a lot of training, a lot of agility she has to go through. And the nature of what these canine officers and their human partners have to do on the job is quite physical. From jumping over fences, crawling through tunnels, and climbing trees, their overall health, joint strength, and mobility is extremely important. We start looking, you know, when they get about eight or nine, when they come through the retraining process and the recertification process, it's one of the jobs of the training staff to assess the dogs and see if the dogs are showing any signs that their bodies are starting to fail them in certain ways. The dogs won't tell you. Right? Peace. They give their work lives to Baltimore County. Hopefully we can give them their end of their life home being just a retired dog, just like you or I would want to be retired and enjoy the end of our life. Up. Up. 
just watching Officer Ben, it's hard to believe he's 10 years old. That's 70 in human years. That's why it's been so hard for the Baltimore County K-9 unit to retire him. He simply has not slowed down. When he gets out on the road, uh, he's 100%. And when he gets on the suspect's trail, I can tell. And he gives it 110% once he gets on that trail. Fall 2010, badge number 2206 will officially be retired. Officer Ben will live out his civilian life with Officer Rossler and his family. He's scheduled to many days running in the woods, swimming in the stream, and playing ball like a puppy with his loyal partner that helped him throughout his long career take a bite out of crime. That's my boy. Tell me, tell me. <coughs> He's gonna be my pet. And it'll be hard for him when he sees the other dog that replaced him going to work with me in uniform. It's gonna be tough on him. He's my buddy. And uh, I hope he thinks as much about me as I do of him. Ready to go to work? Huh? Ready to go to work? Here's your toy. Good boy. I'm happy to report that Officer Ben is officially retired and enjoying his civilian life with the Rosser family. We wish them the very best. Well, that's all the time we have left. Until next time, remember, it's your pet's life. Let's help them live it to its fullest. High five, Fachi, high five.